Okay, we continue with About the Child, and you all have been blessed to hear from two of the speakers for tomorrow's summit, and you are about to hear from a third one, and you are about to see Angie right now, because I'm magically going to levitate her right over here. How's that? Angie, good to have you with us, uh, and it, it was really, I've, I've been blessed just in sharing with you prior to going on the air. And uh, Angie, you're heading up a ministry uh, formerly called Chosen Advocates Associates. What's that mean? Well, we're all a chosen advocate. And so the reason why I headed up Chosen Advocates Association is because of the domestic well, issues of human trafficking. Human trafficking is a multi-billion dollar a year industry and it not only affects children internationally, but it affects our children in our community. And the reason why it was placed on my heart was because our God is the defender of an orphan. And these children are abducted, these children are put in these inhumane things in regards to, you know, being used for sex trafficking. And this is 20 to 40 times per day. And these kids can be as young as two years old. The, the youngest that they rescued in the national um, operation called uh, Cross Country um, Innocence Loss Task Force by the FBI was two years old, old in North um, Carolina. Okay. And so let me interrupt you just a minute, Angie, because I'm interested in what you have to say. Uh, somewhere in the background, there's a speaker on that's delaying this. Uh, is if you would tr see if you can find the mute button over the video. That if you're watching the video in the chat room, I don't know if you are or not because I'm hearing you twice, and it, I think it's from some feedback down there. But uh, okay. while while yeah. you're, you, you found it, because I, I want to. Your, your angle on this is very is very unique because a lot of times when we hear about uh, human trafficking, you know, we think about the victim into what they're being trafficked into, and that is obviously a concern. But you have, your ministry is after they're rescued from it. Tell us more about that. Well, um, well, it's, it's not only just rescued from it, but... My ministry basically is bringing community awareness on the domestic issue that's happening in our com communities. That's our research and development. But the overall picture is that we are going to build the first holistic healing medical center because holistic is treating the mind, body, and spirit. And I am an RN by profession. And so the medical profession is not where they need to be in regards to treating these type of victims once they do get recovered. Um, and so we looked at, there's a lot of issues that these, these patients suffer with. Um, and so we're doing a lot of pioneer work. And so my organization hosted a national human trafficking summit back on 9-11 last year. And we had people from all over the country at state level, federal level. We had Dr. Laura Ladeer, who um, was an advisor to the Obama administration when the Trafficking Victims Protection Act was passed in 2001. And she helped them organize a human trafficking um, task force at the federal level. And she was a speaker. And when she came, she's been doing this for about 21 years. We even have the UN there. Um, we had a woman that did a, a mission out in Bosnia who also uh, talked about, you know, some corrupt peacekeepers being involved with the trafficking situation when domestic children are taken from our country into international and how that has all worked. Um, but the thing is, is they said that that was the first summit that has addressed um, the medical implications of this situation. Um, and it's, it's horrid when these kids, they get, they get put on drugs to be able to make them dependent upon the trafficker. Mm -hmm. um, they get raped 20 to 40 times per day. So they suffer from severe PTSD and there's a lot of physiological things that are happening because they don't get to see a doctor. Um, and it's all driven by sex, you know, child sex trafficking and labor trafficking is also another thing that um, is an issue. But my call was to address the child sex trafficking under the human trafficking umbrella. And so we're um, working on that. We've initiated a call to action. We're educating. Um, we have our second summit that 
we're going to be hosting out in San Jose, California. So we're going to start taking this all over the country. Um, I partnered up with a organization called Fire Firehouse community who rehabilit rehabilitates gang members off of the streets. And we know that with organized crime, that's huge in regards to child sex trafficking um, and then their involvement. So we're trying to sever it from, from the root cause. And there's a lot of high profile people that are involved with human trafficking politically. There could be lawyers, doctors, judges, you know, um, law enforcement, just different types of people that are involved in this um, in the underground level. But you know what? Everything that's done in the dark is brought to light. And we need to address this now. We have been called to address this modern day slavery. People think that it happens in, in overseas and it doesn't happen in our communities. But if you're thinking that way, you're dead wrong. It's, it's happening. It could be happening next door. It can be happening in your backyard. We need to wake up as a country, as a people, because if we don't and we don't stand in the gap in regards to this issue, um, it's going to get too close to home. And it doesn't care if you're rich, you're poor. It doesn't care. This, this issue of trafficking does not care of what your color is, of what your race is in regards to the statistics of these children being recovered. It's all races, all ages all groups it doesn't matter two family home parent homes single parent homes even the state there was 29 children in 2014 that were in the state's custody that were being trafficked that got recovered here in denver so it's it's big and it's huge and it's like okay well what's going on in these systems and so it's broken and so it's important for us as a people to to know about this to learn about this to look at the prevention sign to educate people about their human rights and about this issue because we all have a right to not be um, put into slavery you know and that's one of our 30 that's one of our 30 rights angie one of the you you, you kind of went over some of the physiological implications um, that that manifest themselves when a victim is trafficked like this. Tell us a little bit about what recovery looks like, and if you have a success story, uh, we'd love to hear it. Well, recovery can take up to 20, 25 years. Um, one of my speakers, Romy Lam, um, he was trafficked, and it happens to boys. He was a speaker, but he was trafficked at the age of five years old. Um, he is his dad was an alcoholic dad moved out of the home mom was an alcoholic mom got involved with the gentleman she got married to this gentleman this gentleman started being very nice to Jerome and started giving him gifts and all of that and then started molesting him and raping him and um, actually he had told a story because we were on PBS um, together talking about a story talking about the summit and he had said that um, his stepfather threatened to kill his mother, threatened to kill him, and the first time that he got trafficked was at a truck stop. He was handcuffed to a truck stop sink, and he was sodomized and raped for over six hours, being five years old, till the ages, to, I mean, that happened consistently till he was 16 years old. Um, and he said the only thing that really saved him is he um, went into the army after high school and he traveled the world and he kind of kept it as the dark secret um, and it, he had to go through about 25 years of therapy and now he's an advocate and he's a big voice in regards to this happening to young men it happens more so than not young men are preferred a lot of times young men won't say anything because it's a masculinity type of mm -hmm. thing but he's a success story and he is amazing in regards to you know he suffered from a lot of like uh, physiological things in regards to being sodomized at that young age he had to have plastic surgery there had to be a lot of different kinds of things that took place with him because his body was just mm -hmm. um, yeah. not the way it should have been um, and he shared that with us. And so not only that, the, there's a high risk for STDs, there's a high risk for hepatitis, TB, HIV. Um, a lot of times, sometimes uh, these traffickers or these, these in the demand, the people asking for our children may not want to use condoms. 
Um, so sometimes these uh, kids can become pregnant and they can go underground to get abortions that can have caused a lot of complications as well. Um, looking at the withdrawal process when someone is given drugs for quite some time, um, their body is going through a flight, fright, and uh, fight response, sympathetic nervous response. Mm -hmm. And so when they do get pulled from that, you have to withdraw them. A lot of times it's like, let's don't cover it over with a pill. Let's look at things holistically. Um, so that's why we want to be able to use conventional conventional therapy because if they do come to us with um, STDs, HIV, these different kinds of comorbidities that haven't been treated, maybe they have diabetes, maybe they have you know respiratory issues, um, they need to be treated as well. But we got to look at priority, look at plans of care. We're going to treat that with antibiotics, but we're also going to look at the holistic measures in regards to withdrawal. Um, so those are those things that we're kind of working on collaborating with because each case is different. Um, it just depends on how, how traumatized um, they come out of that life and being able to work and deal with them. But it can take up to 20, 25, 30 years um, for them to get to that point where they can talk about it, where they can get to that point where they can um, systematically be a part of society again. Angie, um, you've got a story to tell, and we are looking forward to hearing more about that at tomorrow's conference. And Angie, before we leave, I just want to pause a moment and just tell you, uh, on behalf of the entire PJNet team, uh, what you're doing is a good thing. And, and just God bless you, Angie. Thank you for your work. Thank you.